Before the TE20, most farming was done by horses and human labor, making the work extremely slow and arduous. By the outbreak of the First World War, there were over a million horses on farms in Britain. Whilst working in the motor trade in Belfast, Ferguson set out to design a new kind of tractor. He could see that it was the lack of control over implements which held existing tractors back. He developed a linkage system which brought the two together as one machine for the first time. A prototype of the black tractor went into production in England. But Ferguson fell out with the manufacturer and less than 2,000 were made. Eager to see his tractor mass-produced, he demonstrated it to Henry Ford in America in 1938. A deal was struck and Ford agreed to manufacture the tractor in the States, incorporating Ferguson's linkage system. The new tractor was called the Ford Ferguson. And on June 29, 1939, at Dearborn, Michigan, the product of their collaboration was first made public. American farmers were initially skeptical about the new tractor because of its small size. But once they saw what it could do, the Ford Ferguson sold in large numbers. Mr. Ferguson, will this machine be a success for the small farmer? Yes. It is deliberately planned to be a success for the small farm. We'll do all the work that animals do on the farm at less than half the cost. But the small farmer in Britain would have to wait. Plans to export the tractor were halted by the outbreak of war. By the time the war ended, Ferguson had plans for a new, improved tractor to be made in Britain. The first T-20s came off the production line in October 1946. At last, a light maneuverable tractor was available to British farmers. The combination of three-point linkage and hydraulics made tractor and implement one, and was sold to farmers as the Ferguson system. If you think of a tractor as a mechanized horse, then, of course, you build a plow on wheels to harness to it. Now, think of a tractor as a plowing tool. Why not make the plowshare part of it, without any wheels of its own, and couple it here, and here, and on top here. This three-point linkage, as it's called, is the crux of the idea. It makes every tool part of the tractor, not dead weight to be dragged. A lever at the driver's side operates a hydraulic pump to raise or lower the tool, so you can plow at any depth at a touch of the lever. The impact of the new tractor was dramatic. Farmers were able to work faster and more efficiently. The T20 could plow in an hour what had taken a horse the whole day. Because the tractor and its system were so revolutionary, Ferguson established a training school. Here, salesmen, engineers and farmers were taught the mechanics of this new way of working. The school was at Stonely Abbey, a few miles from the factory. The main course, which takes ten days, is divided between work in the field and in the classroom. It deals with both theory and practice. Many of the students are, of course, already familiar with the basic operations of tractor handling and driving. But others have to begin right at the beginning. They must be able, when necessary, to advise farmers on how to make the best use of tractor and implements, and how to get the full advantage of their flexibility. A network of tractor dealerships sprang up all over the country. But it was through large public demonstrations that ordinary farmers first came into contact with the new tractor. The centerpiece of a demonstration was cultivating the small square. This was an area 20 feet by 27 feet, too small for a horse or any other tractor to work in. We make sure that the driver is conversant with all the controls. And then he tries his hand at driving for the first time. Ferguson's service was extensive. When farmers bought a TE20, the dealer came with it to make sure they knew what they were doing. I'm one of the many thousands who farm the Ferguson way. It isn't just a case of being sold a tractor and then leaving it at that. 
It's the kind of service we get afterwards that's important to us chaps. Ferguson had always intended that farmers all over the world should benefit from his system. By the mid-1950s, the T20 was being used in over 160 countries. 70% of the 74,000 tractors turned out by Ferguson's last year were exported. These tractors are now working at all sorts of jobs in many different countries. As tractor sales grew, so did the sales of implements. Only Ferguson tools would fit the integrated system and a whole new range of farm machinery had to be developed for the TE-20. Ploughing is only one job on the farm. An agricultural machine worth its petrol must do all the others too, better than a horse or a mechanical horse. A horse can't saw up logs. The tractor can and dig post holes. There are 20 tools for 20 different jobs the tractor can do. Efficient mechanization has come to the farm. The uses of the T20 went beyond farming. A range of 60 different implements took the tractor to places it had never been before. Playing fields, building sites, road construction. The roller is chain driven from the power unit's rear wheels and steered through an independent system. When the power unit is required elsewhere, it is a matter of minutes to disconnect. In 1953, Harry Ferguson, by now nearly 70, sold out to the Canadian firm Massey Harris. Just two years later, production of the T20 came to an end. In 10 years, over half a million tractors had been made, more than any other single British model before or since. The 1960s saw the end of the T20 era. Farms were getting larger, so tractors did too. All over the country, farmers replaced their 26 horsepower Fergies with new tractors of up to 100 horsepower. <laughs> 